Singapura ni dikelilingi dengan bangunan-bangunan yang moden-moden, terlalu cantik, terlalu orang kata mewah serta ke depan high tech, semua high tech. Dan di tengah-tengah bandar Singapura itu ada satu bangunan yang masih mengekalkan ciri-ciri lama. Selamat pagi, stesen kereta api Tanjung Pagar boleh saya bantu? Station Master Shamsul takes great pride in his work. He regards it as an inheritance from his father, who served in a railway before him. For over a decade, Shamsul has observed the station and society in this fast-changing city. Ada setengah-setengah rakyat Singapura sendiri yang tak tahu wujudnya bangunan ni. Ada yang rakyat Singapura sendiri yang tak tahu bahawa ada pirmatan kereta api yang boleh mereka menaiki ke Malaysia. Ada, sebenarnya ada dan saya pernah terdengar satu orang datang ke sini mengatakan, eh, ada kereta api ke sini? Kata, oh, you, macam mana saya boleh tak tahu? The station was built in 1932 at the southernmost end of the Federated Malay States Railway Line. Its unique architecture is reminiscent of the European railway stations of that time. Swan and McLaren, the architectural firm behind Singapore's iconic Raffles Hotel was commissioned to build the station. Visitors are welcomed by four male figures guarding her entrance. Sculpted by Italian artist Cavalieri Rodolfo Nolli, they symbolise the economic pillars of the former British colony. Agriculture, commerce, transport and industry. These sculptures, however, do not enjoy the same fame as Nolly's more renowned work on the facade of Singapore's Supreme Court. Inside the station, distinctive wall murals are panelled with scenes of rural life in Malaya, such as paddy planting, Chinese junk shipping and coconut growing. These illustrations reflect the key role of the railway as an indispensable hub of transportation and commerce between colonial Malaysia and Singapore. But for some, she's more than just a reminder of economic importance to the British Empire. Ada pelajar British ni, dia bawa gambar kepada saya tunjukkan tentang mural yang ada dalam stesen kereta api Singapore ni, dia mengatakan bahawa bapa dia yang membuat ni. Dan dia cukup-cukup rasa bangga sampai hampir nak melitiskan air mata lah kerana terlalu gembira sebab apa? Benda tu masih kekal sampai ke hari ini. Tak ada perubahan, tak ada cacat celah, memang tak ada. Memang itulah asal yang dia ambil gambar tu sampai sekarang ni itulah dia. The station survived the Japanese invasion during the Second World War and Singapore struggled for independence in 1965. Her cathedral-style interior remains intact, and her ownership still lies unchanged in the hands of the Malaysian government long after Singapore and Malaysia separated to form two different countries. Occupying about 200 hectares of land, the station and its tracks make up the largest Malaysian property standing on Singapore soil. This station actually belongs to Malaysia, but we don't sell Malaysian newspapers here. Yeah, there are a lot of tourists who come to the station getting confused where they are, whether they are in Singapore or Malaysia. Although the building has remained untouched by time, the world around it has been changing rapidly. Travellers now have newer and faster means of transport like buses and budget airlines. So, jadi salah satu daripada saya tengok apa yang saya perhatikan pada hari ini, perbezaan komuniti yang menggunakan kereta api itu ketara sangat, cukup ketara. Dahulu kereta api ini banyak daripada segi penumpang-penumpang yang tak ada pilihan lain, terutamanya dalam bentuk keluarga-keluarga yang besar. Karena hanya kereta api ini sajalah dulu transport yang paling memudahkan mereka dan paling murah 
untuk mereka pergi balik ke tempat kampung halaman. Golongan-golongan muda di Singapura, mereka dah biasa dengan pemodenan kan. Mungkin mereka rasa tak selesa ataupun satu kejutan budaya bagi mereka apabila berada di dalam bangunan kita pergi. Train travel has sadly faded in significance in Singapore's commerce and tourism sectors. And for those whose livelihoods continue to depend on the station's survival, times are uncertain. Ini menyaga. Kalau korang passenger, mesti korang. Tapi luar menyaga bagus. Tapi sini ada korang sini. Uh, 1936. Rumsu was uh, opened in 1936. And it was run by some uh, relation and my father came to Singapore. And he worked here for about 20 over years before he actually took over the shop until now. And uh, I am the third generation going now. Saya kerja sini 47 tahun sampai sekarang. Tapi lain tempat tak pergi. Sini juga saya kerja. He, he is actually one of the oldest staff in the uh, station. Yeah, ini dalam station uh, saya juga lama me orang. Lagi semua saya belakang juga datang. Saya juga semua lama. Saya sini punya hal semua sikit-sikit surat tahu. Surat tahu mia. Like his father, Jamil intends to grow old with the station. He hopes train journeys will someday become popular again, so that the young will visit the station and, like him, discover a wealth of knowledge within its walls. This place is actually my second home. After my school hours, I spend a lot of time here. I love looking at the trains arriving, departing, and also seeing people from so many countries. I talk to a lot of them. They tell me about their country, and all these are valuable knowledge for me. When I grew up, I wanted to go to all these countries. And I actually traveled to South America. And I've heard about South America from tourists in Singapore. And in those days, when I was a child, it was a fantasy to be traveling. Compared to kids my age that time, who, who grew up at playgrounds at uh, HDB, I grew up at the railway station looking at a, a different life for me, totally a different experience for me. Uh, it's really nice, so many memories. Uh, I had a fantastic childhood at the station, not at home, but at the station. The station was also home to another Singaporean who grew up watching his father manage a thriving business on the second and third floors of the building. In fact, I was born just right behind this hotel in Blair Road. Uh, it was during those days in the 50s that uh, there wasn't much uh, hospitals and all that, so the midwife had to come to deliver me from Blair Road. So that shows how close I am to this place. Pyang's family owned the Station Hotel, which opened with the station in 1932. His younger days were spent working at the hotel as a bartender, cook, and even waiter. Living in the station also gave Kyang many unusual experiences. Some things that could only take place in a building that went through the horrors of the Second World War. There are many stories about this place or even rumours about this place that it's haunted. But let me tell you, it's true. We used to be sitting in the office there, having a drink and chat way past midnight. Suddenly, we'll see a figure walk past there. And for no rhyme or reason, it will be disappeared, gone, and it reappear at the last hole. And that shift sends shivers out of our spine. We freak out. <laughs> we go, what's happening? Comparable to the Raffles Hotel during its prime, the once glamorous rooms now lie abandoned. After legal matters with the Malayan Railway, caused the Lim family business to evict. All Kyang has left are pieces of the hotel's specially commissioned silver cutlery and bittersweet memories of life and love in the past. This place did inspire me to write a certain song. It's called Cold Morning. I used to meet this girl here, here at the railway station. and used to sit down and have coffee and just start the day before we start our work. 
and then one day she just didn't turn up anymore. So that's how the song came about. Among all the artifacts that I kept from this place, my favorite is a lock. Because the lock, you can close a chapter of your life by locking it, and when you open it up, you can lead you to a new beginning. As Kyung closes the chapter of his life that was intertwined with the station, two young Singaporeans bring the station into theirs. For as long as they could remember, Hazik and Saiful have always been fascinated by trains. In fact, they have come to regard the station as an unusual playground. Uh, I basically started liking trains since I was I think about six years old, when I first rode the train back to my hometown. And also, uh, my grandfather is a local fitter for the Malaysian Railway, so I think it's passed down to the jeans. Uh. When I took my first express train to Skamak, Malaysia when I was seven, uh, I feel very happy and excited when I first ride my express trains to my hometown. Their knowledge in railways exceeds what one would normally expect of teenagers their age. 18-year-old Hazik is the Singaporean correspondent for the International Railway Gazette magazine. He met an even younger railway enthusiast, 14-year-old Saiful, through the Singapore Railway Fan Club. Naturally, these boys quickly bonded over their love for discovery. I like to explore the railway track because I can find hidden signboards, hidden signals and other things that are not found in the station. I think the value of the station is because uh, it's very rare to find this kind of architecture in this region. And it went through uh, the times such as uh, Japanese occupation, uh, merger and separation of Singapore and Malaysia. And I think Singaporeans can learn something that is out of the textbook, which is not taught to them during their school days. One of Hazik and Saiful's favourite parts of the station lies stuck away at the end of the railway tracks. A large, ancient-looking metal structure called a turntable. Every train that reaches this terminus has to make its way to the turntable, where its engine head is manually turned around for its journey back to Malaysia. And beside this turntable, an old Hindu temple quietly resides. Okay, the temple was built in the 1960s by the railway staff. At the time, at the point of time, there were a lot of Indian workers working in the railway. So uh, they need a place for devotion. So they built this temple around these vicinities for their safety and their protection. The Sri Muneswaran Temple opens its gates daily to both regular devotees and the occasional visitor drawn in by the burst of flavour in this hidden corner of the railway line. The railway enthusiasts also enjoy exploring the tracks that lead beyond the Tanjung Paga station. Along the Singapore line, there is another key railway feature that comes as a surprise to the few who have chanced upon it. Nestled amongst the forest of prime land on Bukit Timah Road lies another station. Hazik and Saiful, however, are no strangers to this place. The Bukit Timah Railway Station. Ada setengah anak muda yang datang kat sini uh, bertanyakan tentang station ni bila dia dibina, apa sistem operasinya. Stesen ni sebenarnya jadi stesen perantara antara stesen Tanjung Pagar dan stesen Udan. Itulah fungsinya di sini. Kita hanya buka untuk perselisihan train. Before the separation of Malaysia and Singapore, passengers travelling between the two territories used to be able to board and alight here. 
but it now sits secluded and forgotten. Lokasi stesen Bukit Timah ni terpencil sebenarnya. Ada sekali tu bila saya order KFC, saya hubungilah pihak KFC ni kan. Jadi bila dia, bila mana dia tanya mana lokasi, kita katalah stesen Bukit Timah. Dia orang pun kadang macam pelik. Bukit Timah ada stesen ke? Stesen apa? MRT ke apa? Mana ada stesen MRT Bukit Timah eh? Ada? Tak ada kan? Jadi uh, kita kena bagi lokasi yang tepat lah. Today, there are only two persons working at this station, Hashim and his assistant Ghani, a trainee station master. Despite the isolation, Hashim enjoys working in this peaceful environment. He waits patiently each day for the trains that pass by the small station to pass the train driver the distinctive key token. Fungsi key token uh, untuk pemandu sebagai kuasa bertolak lah, kita panggil authority for the driver to proceed from one station to the next station. Okay, sistem kunci token tu, uh, kunci token uh, akan dikeluarkan daripada peti instrument token dan akan diserahkan kepada pemandu lah. Okay bang, 15 masuk, 16 tutup, 17 sekarang untuk sisap. Sistem ni sebenarnya dah lama, sistem British. Jadi kita masih gunakan lah. Tempat lain, uh, lain daripada stesen ni, banyak telah di-upgrade lah. Kira stesen ni lah sahaja yang tinggal uh, cara operasi dia. Kalau nak ikutkan apa yang tercatat pada instrumen tu, ia dibuat pada tahun 1959. Jadi masih, masih dikekalkan lagi kerana dia punya kegunaan dia keselamatan slow but steady and very very safe this is why 70 year old grandmother mona remains one of the few passengers who still use the train to travel between her village in malaysia and her apartment in singapore she started taking the train over 60 years ago when she was still a child. Train rides in those days were expensive, an adventure and a rare treat. Masa 50-an tu lah, ketapinya kan, pakai arang, bakap. Memang lagi baju bila tingkap tu buka, jadi bila angin tiup tu, abuk semua masuk kat kena kita kan, muka. Badan, kalau baju putih tu comot, hitam, selekeh lah, tak, tak ada lah lawan macam sekarang kan, bersih. Train travel today has come a long way since the 1950s. And Mona still remains a devoted fan of the Singapore-Malaysia train journey. Rik memang suka naik kereta api, kata uh, pertama kita tak boleh risau apa-apa kat jalan kan, uh, rehat. Dan selesa, kita tak perlu terkejar-kejar lah. Ha, sampai masanya kita dah sampai tempat yang kita nak turun kan. Ha, itu yang paling suka lah. Sekarang orang suka, yang ada ada kereta sendiri memang dah ada naik kereta kan. Tapi pada WIP memang WIP naik train lah. Dah berapa tahun memang naik, naik train. Jadi, tak pernah naik kapal terbang ke, baik kapal tak pernah. Besides a comfortable ride, the destination is not the only thing to look forward to. Every journey is a new experience, and this train traveller is one who truly enjoys the ride. Kalau kita naik kereta api ni yang baik lah kan. Kalau kita nak tunjukkan pada anak-anak kita kan, macam murid cucu, cucu, cucu dia doang dapat tahu macam mana keadaan ni sekarang. Sekarang ni kita jalan ni nampak pokok getah. Ha, ada juga orang anak-anak sekarang tak tahu pokok getah, pokok pisang pun tak tahu. Ha, macam mana pokok pisang? Pemandangan macam gini rasa kat Singapura tak ada dah. Susah nak tengok. 
tu lah tempat yang uh, patut kita rasa bangga lah Tempat ada tempat hubungan yang begitu megah lagi kan, besar gitu kan Dan semua orang rakyat Singapura, rakyat Malaysia tahu Itu adalah Malaysia, kan? Ha, itu adalah Singapura While Mona comes to the railway station every month for her trips to Malaysia, others come for another reason. Every night, the station canteen is packed with hungry Singaporeans drawn in by the shared passion. Food. Malaysia. Sebab saya rasa belongs to Malaysia territory lah. So in terms of uh, freedom, everything, we can drink, we can smoke, we can talk, a lot of things lah. Nobody pressure us lah. Kantin di stesen kereta api Tanjung Pagar ni sudah lama menapak di sini. Fungsi dia sebenarnya di sini bukan sahaja untuk orang datang makan balik tetapi fungsi dia adalah menghimpun atau menemukan dua budaya antara Malaysia dengan Singapura sebab sejarah telah menceritakan bahawa sebenarnya dulu Singapura ini adalah sebahagian daripada Malaysia dan hari ini telah berpisah jangan jadikan perpisahan ini perpisahan yang terus perpisahan yang tidak ada hubungan dan stesen kereta api Tanjung Pagar adalah sumber yang penting untuk merapatkan lagi tali persaudaraan antara Singapura dengan Malaysia terutama golongan muda hari ini supaya mereka tidak buta sejarah Incredibly, the station has survived the modernization of this fast-paced society. Today, she stands as a silent reminder of the way of life of old Singapore. Sadly, remnants of a glorious past are fading away in the eyes of society. But Tanjung Paga Railway Station will always have a special place in the hearts of these individuals whose life stories infuse the station with vibrancy that she's fast losing. Has the station become nothing more than just a platform of memories? Or is her value just waiting to be rediscovered? At this place, where even time seems to stand still, the future is anyone's guess.